Salajang Museum never stops surprising us with one fantastic collection after another. The collection we are going to view today is a marvel by itself, a standalone wonder, the highly prized and the most celebrated jade collection of the Salajangs, unquestionably the only one of its kind in the world today. The lovely green luster of jade has held attraction for mankind since thousands of years ago. It's unbelievable but true that jade was known to man 7,000 years ago. As far back as 3000 BC, jade was known in China as Yu, the royal gem. Soft, smooth and glossy, it appeared to them like benevolence, fine, compact and strong like intelligence as described by the great philosopher Confucius. At Salajan Museum, you can marvel at one of the most fabulous displays of jade objects in the world. Each piece glows in unparalleled beauty and tells its own intriguing story. As you look around, you will be mesmerized by the gleaming, gorgeous shades of green enhanced by gold, dazzling with diamonds or simply carved into the most exquisite shapes and objects. of this golden gallery, as it was known earlier, is a spellbinding experience. of jade is not only ancient, it's absorbingly interesting. As long ago as the pre-Columbian period, the Mayas, Aztecs and Olmecs of Central America prized jade more highly than gold. New Zealand's Maoris Egypt, jade was admired as the stone of love, inner peace, harmony and balance. In other regions and cultures too, jade was regarded as lucky or protective stone. Yet, nowhere in the world did it have the significance that it had in Asia. In the long history of the art and culture of the colossal Chinese empire, Jade has always had a very special significance comparable with that of gold and diamonds in the West. The Chinese were the first to use jade, fashioning from it exquisite religious objects, vessels, figures, snuff bottles and natural objects like animals, fruits and vegetables. The rule of the Qing dynasty from 17th century to 19th century was probably the golden era for the development of the craft of jade carving. Jade, or Yu, as it is called in China, actually a generic term for three different gems, nephrite, jadeite, and chloromenolite. Jadeite and nephrite are both regarded in China as Zen Yu, meaning genuine jade.
hardest and naturally the brightest. Its color range is diverse, green being the most sought after shade. Nephrite has a tint of green and sometimes white, grey, ivory and yellow. Both nephrite and jadeite often have veins, blemishes and streaks running through them, though these may not always be regarded as flaws. On the contrary, some of these patterns are considered rare and valuable. Chloromanolite is mostly dark green. Only in the very finest jade do we find that the color is evenly distributed. As well as jewelry lovers, jade has an hypnotic allure. In Asia, above all, it is collected as an antique implication and faith as they all play an important role in the choice and selection. Jade is regarded as a symbol of the good, the beautiful and the precious, embodying the virtues of wisdom, justice, compassion, modesty and courage. So any time to go. The jade markets, be it in Hong Kong or Myanmar, are immensely sought after because of the great significance this gem holds for the people of Asia. virtually captures a slice of the history of jade in its magnificent gallery. It was in China that jade gained the popularity as a precious stone. The Chinese gave jade a divine stature and this can be seen in the many religious and ritualistic ornaments. Vessels used for worship were invariably made from jade. Salarjing Museum, one can get a close-up view of these ancient pieces which adorned Buddhist altars in the 18th century. The beautifully crafted vessels depicted mountains of jade and many are the natural scenes carved on them with incredible mastery. Chinese jade dominates one part of the gallery and there are several stunning exhibits that are incomparable for their carved beauty. Elevating jade to be worthy of worship one is transfixed by the beauty of a Buddhist goddess carved in jade, holding a long lotus stem in her hand. This marvelous jade statue of Quan Yin, the goddess of mercy, is attributed to the Xuanlong period of 18th century China. It is said that news of Salajung III's passionate love for art spread far and wide and the sellers of wares from across the country and globe thronged his place. The custom was that sellers would place their wares in a special room along with respective price tags and leave. Salajung I would at his leisure have a look at the wares and choose the ones he wished to purchase. He would pay the amount mentioned without any bargaining or negotiation. This legacy was carried on by Salarjung II and extensively by Salarjung III. 
As the result of their labor of love, the remarkable collection of antiques was acquired that continues to enthrall us even today. of Chinese jade were brought from across the continent and among them few deserve a special attention. Perhaps it represents the symbol of heaven. A green jade, pie disc, is one of the more interesting pieces. The Chinese carvers lavished their talent and intricate carving skills on anything they chiseled in precious jade and four buckles made out of the unique mutton fat jade stand out as brilliant examples of their mastery. Nature too was immortalized in jade and a praying mantis resting on a bottle god intertwined with twigs and tendrils in green nephrite jade is truly an object of fascination. Other miscellaneous in jade are snuff boxes with jade stoppers, tiny figures of animals and birds and stunningly beautiful Chinese screens set with figures made of jade, all displaying extraordinary mastery and finest craftsmanship. Jade carving reached pinnacles of glory under the Mughals. Mughal emperors were attracted by the versatility and beauty of this semi-precious gemstone. They preferred it in all its various mysterious hues and shades, whether pure white nephrite or opaque green jadeite. Mughal craftsmen skillfully carved jade into bowls, wine cups, mirror bags, dagger and sword handles, hookah mouth pieces and fly whisk handles. Marvelously chiseled items have found their place in Salarjan's collection. Though they probably were items of daily use for the Mughal emperors, they are all fashioned out of incredibly beautiful and majestic green and white jade. Now displayed are resplendent exhibits. Mughal royalty seem to have established the importance of jade as a gemstone only befitting the monarchs. They cherished it with a princely patronage, creating prized possessions which enhanced their imperial image. what is probably the biggest collection of Mughal jade items. Mughal craftsmen left their mark on jade craftsmanship by the exquisite use of gold and precious stones encrusted in jade. 
a glittering array of exhibits which includes Quran stands, mirror bags, wine cups, sword and dagger handles all expertly carved and enriched with rubies, emeralds, diamonds and other precious stones dazzle the viewers. A green jade jewel box inlaid with gold is a strikingly beautiful item while another aesthetically carved leaf shaped tray of white jade displaying the delicate veins are amazing examples of the supreme talent of the craftsman. essence of Mughal royalty is revealed to us even in the smallest of objects. A fruit knife which belonged to Noor Jahan, the most powerful Mughal queen, shimmers in glory. Its jade handle encrusted with pieces of emeralds and rubies studded cleverly in the shape of a parrot. The craftsmanship is fabulous and as a piece of history it is truly priceless. Emperor Jahangir's jade-handled hunting knife, richly bejeweled with rubies, emeralds and diamonds, captures our attention as an outstanding masterpiece. Emperor Jahangir fancied Indian fruits and flowers and a vast selection of jade wine cups fashioned in the shapes of melons, gods, lotus, lily and sunflower are some delightful examples which pleased the royal taste. The variety of jade cups at Salajan Museum is a vast and sparkling collection and there are some beautiful cups shaped like almond tree leaves, pepal leaves and vine leaves. Workmanship excelled to the degree of perfection and these cups are crafted in jade as thin as natural leaves. An astounding effect is that the veins of the leaves are visible too. Such craftsmanship leaves us speechless in wonder. The paraphernalia of the princess, the innumerable selection of swords and daggers with uniquely carved lifelike jade heads of animals set with precious stones recalls the Mughal bravura and heroic style. The Jade Gallery of Salajan Museum is justly famous since every piece is an invaluable original. Centuries have not sullied the sheen of jade and several Quran stands from way back as the 12th century are true antiques. One impressive piece made from a single block of jade and carved with the tree of life specifically inscribed Shamsuddin Altamish Badsha 1209-10 belonged to Shamsuddin Altamish who ruled Delhi at the beginning of the 13th century. Several other book stands and Quran stands are worthy of admiration for carvings of tendrils, leaves, flowers and striking architectural designs dated to the 17th and 18th centuries. Vanity pieces, the mirror bags of the Mughal princesses were given an extraordinarily delicate and elaborately elegant and graceful treatment by the craftsmen. The mirror bags display an efflorescence of exquisite carvings in jade. Floral motifs, full-blown lotuses, budding lilies, grapevine and laurel leaves that add the touch of feminine beauty. Jade is basically a rough hard stone which is made up of three sort of minerals, jadeite, nephrite and chloromineralite, out of which jadeite is the hardest and the brightest. It was widely used in uh, Mughal days and uh, we can in here, jade gallery, we can see a lot of objects made up of jade like uh, dagger and uh, sword sheaths, vessels. In this jade gallery, we can see inscribed amulets on which Turut Sharif is written and according to Islam, 
uh, the person who recites the Ruch Sharif, it protects him from all the evil powers. A 17th century white jade mirror holder is an incredibly exquisite and undoubtedly irresistible jade in a hundred shapes and forms mesmerizes your senses and you begin to wonder if the Mughal rulers ever used any other material for their commonplace item. Spice boxes, paper cutters, sherbet cups, vases, hookah mouthpieces all made of jade and studded with gems too. An exceptionally beautiful grape colored jade vase steals your attention here. We stand in awe of the Mughals, royal pension and Salarjan's overwhelming passion which brings before our eyes a collection like no other. and speechless? Well, we don't blame you. Every visitor leaves the Jade Gallery bedazzled. The sparkle and glow lingers for a long time. Salarjung's Jade Room was truly a scintillating experience. And now, hold your breath for the next episode. It's unusual, it's unique, it's unmatched. It's all about ivory, not just from India, but from all corners of the world. Burmese, Chinese, Japanese, French. The many shapes that ivory can take round the world seems immensely interesting, doesn't it? Be sure to be with us next week. Till then, stay entertained, stay tuned.